everybody. Darren Voros here. Today, I'm here with Aaron and Josh of the Finley Mortgage Team, and we're going to be talking all about multifamily financing and specifically financing with CMHC. Before we get into it with Aaron and Josh, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Aaron, Josh, great to have you guys here. Thanks for taking some time out of your busy day. I know it's crazy in the mortgage world right now with everything that's going on. So I appreciate you being here. Before we jump in, uh, give everyone a bit of an intro on who you are and what you guys do as, uh, as real estate investors and as mortgage brokers. For sure. Yeah, definitely a pleasure to be here. Um, if anybody doesn't know us, I'm Josh. This is Aaron. Um, we are some of the owners of the Finlay Mortgage Team. Specifically what we do, if you haven't seen us, uh, we are a real estate-centric mortgage brokerage. So we help investors scale their portfolio, whether it be your very first rental property to buying a large 50-unit uh, apartment building. We help with all the financing in between. So we are a solutions-based we deal with all different types of lenders from private capital to some of the top big five banks. Um, and, and we cater solutions to our clients to ensure that, you know, we can find a solution to help them scale, maybe not just in this property, but maybe the next two or three or four down the road as well. Well, let's dive right in. Let's talk about um, multifamily uh, investing for one and also financing multifamily properties, because I think this is a very popular topic, uh, something that we deal with in our business every day. And specifically this idea around CMHC financing, because I think a lot of people hear this term, but they don't really understand what CMHC financing is and how it relates to the multifamily space. And when I say multifamily, we're talking about five units or higher, which is generally that threshold to get into con commercial residential lending. But before we jump into that, why don't you explain what CMHC is, who they are and what they do? Perfect. So for anybody who's purchased a home before, you've probably heard of putting 5% down on the property. Uh, CMHC is Canada Mortgage Housing Corporation. They are one of the largest um, insurance companies in Canada. So for anybody who doesn't know, there are three insurance companies or large insurance companies in Canada. There's CMHC, Canada Guarantee, and Genworth, also known as Sagan. Um, they are uh, federally mandated by the government to uh, offer mortgage default insurance for anybody who's putting less than 20% down on a property. Now, the majority of people who deal with CMHC or any sort of um, insurance on that scale, it's usually just a residential property. It's not putting 20% down, you getting in for 5%, paying your CMHC premium and getting into a home. Now, most people don't understand that there are larger CMHC loans um, and CMHC is quite active in the multifamily space. And uh, for anybody who is looking to take advantage of really low rates and longer amortization periods, CMHC has great products available to the markets. Um, but there's kind of like this mystery and cloud around CMHC. So I'm really glad you had us on so we can kind of dig a little bit deeper and maybe debunk some of the myths around it, some of the advantages and disadvantages about using this product. So my first question is um, with, with just expanding on what you said there, because I think there's going to be a little bit of confusion. CMHC is not a lender. CMHC nope. is an insurance product that gets attached to the lender that you're working with. So is that correct? And, and, and you know, uh, maybe explain a little bit about how the process works, where CMHC gets into the process and where you engage them on, on a particular product. Yeah, no, you're totally correct. CMHC isn't actually the lender. They are the insurers of, of the, the mortgage. So on the residential side, they are, um, they're there to back end insure any default. And that's what allows the lender to um, extend that loan to value from, uh, from 80 to that 95%. And then on the five unit upside on the larger multifamilies, um, it allows the lender to go up to uh, an 85% loan to value. Um, and, and they allow them to extend out the amortization and have a little bit longer terms as well, too. So they're not putting the money out. They're simply uh, insuring the actual mortgage product itself, um, which helps the lender take on uh, you know, a little bit more riskier term, but, but give more uh, beneficial and, and more competitive terms to the borrower. In regards to uh, the consumer's communication with CMHC, you would never have communication with the insurer. Um, the relationship is between the actual bank or financial institution themselves and the insurance company. So uh, for large multifamily pro um, properties or buildings, uh, companies like uh, First National, for example, or MCAP, who are large monoline lenders, have pre-existing relationships with uh, CMHC, and they understand how to package these properly. So as a broker, we would 
we would package it and we would have a relationship with the bank and then the bank would then submit to CMHC um, in regards to their guidelines of how they would go about doing that. But uh, from a, a regular you know, consumer perspective, you would never uh, communicate with CMHC. Mm, good clarity there. So as a, as a borrower, I'm looking to finance my multifamily building. I come to you guys, I say, guys, I'm looking for a mortgage. Uh, you know, we just did a, we're in the process of this right now, or one of our uh, conversion projects uh, is almost wrapping up construction probably in the next four or five months. I'm going to come to you and say, we're looking to do the takeout financing. So switching from construction to the actual buy and hold uh, model that we're going to, you know, use moving forward. So then you're going to go out and start that application process like you would with any other loan, but you're saying I'm, you're going to go to specific lenders that may have that CMHC element in their playbook and they can engage CMHC on that side to see if they can get those more preferential terms. Is that correct? Yep, exactly. That is correct. Actually, CMHC just came out a little while ago and out outlined a list of preferred uh, lenders that they work with as well. So um, it's, it's important that you work with a broker who either understands who those lenders are um, or a broker that has previously relationship with those lenders because the lender and broker that you choose to work with is going to have a direct impact on how successful your application is. It's really important to note that not all um, applications are accepted by CMHC for multifamily. It's not the same as, um, as the residential space. So residential space is very easy as long as you meet the minimum requirement and the requirements are very straightforward um, and clear when it comes to us being able to let you know what we need. Whereas the multifamily is a little bit more difficult when it comes to valuing properties, but we'll get into that in a little bit of a later time. In this conversation. Yeah. So let's talk about what some of those requirements are and how they differ. So we send in our application and on a standard, you know, mortgage application, they're going to come back with a list of requirements. What are those additional items that CMHC might ask for um, that we may not see on a regular application? On like for the multi-unit side. So on the residential side, we wouldn't really get additional, um, request or anything like that but on the multi-unit side the majority of the additional things that you're going to be looking at are the application fees and costs so um there's an upfront application cost it's usually about 150 uh, to 100 dollars a door depending on how many units are in that building um all of that needs to be paid up ahead of time on the actual application um other, other than that i mean that's really that's really the only additional things that you're going to have um required from CMHC. Um, there are some additional requirements in terms of qualifying for the loan, like um, the debt service coverage ratio in terms of the underwriting for the actual building itself will change depending on what type of property it is, whether it's strictly residential, um, how many units are in that residential. Like I think it's up to um, seven or eight, it's five to seven and then above seven, it changes. Um, there's slightly different ratios, whether you're looking to purchase the building or whether you're looking to refinance the building. I think it changes by so like 10 basis points. And then the qualification uh, changes again, if you're looking to do a mixed use or commercial type building as well too. So on that commercial stuff, with the, especially with the retail, um, anything mixed use, they do have a little bit higher of a debt servicing require ratio. Um, I think it's around 1.4 to 1.5%. Um, so obviously they're just looking to, to make sure that building is a little more cash heavy and has the ability to, to carry um, the term of the mortgage and, and cover itself as a self-sustaining asset that way. Um, CMHC themselves, they do their own internal underwriting. So um, there can be a change uh, from the initial application, the initial numbers that we run when our client brings us a building. Hey, you know, here's the rent rule. Here's my expense report. What does it look like? Um, you know, we can provide our initial values and we do our best to be as accurate as possible. So, you know, we'll take into consider consideration any CMHC premiums that are going to be on top of that because it is an insured mortgage. So there are premiums involved. Um, so you are going to have that tacked on to your, your mortgage that you're uh, registering. Um, we'll run a few different scenarios at uh, different amortizations, whether it's a 25, a 30, a 40 year, maybe run it at a, a couple of different loan to values, um, maybe a 75 an 80 and an 85% loan to value just to you know play it out and say, here's some of the options you could get. After we submit that in to one of our CMHC approved lenders, they're gonna send that into CMHC for their final underwriting. They're gonna give us back um, their understanding and their own um, numbers based off of their internal systems. And, and sometimes it's completely different. So I, I had a client in the past, it was a 26 unit building. Um, we submitted into uh, the lender, they put it in a CMHC 
And the total valuation based off of their algorithms came back um, probably about like a million, no, it was a little less, maybe like 500,000 under where the appraisal came back. Um, so it was based off a significantly different, uh, significantly lower loan amount or total value of the property, which definitely changes how much you're able to borrow. So, um, you know, it's not always just as simple as saying, Hey, I want to get 85% of this, of this number. And this is the loan amount that I'm going to get. So quite often there is a, a discrepancy between what we kind of hy hypothecate to begin with. And then where CMHC comes back with their final numbers. What are some of the fees involved? Cause you guys have mentioned them a couple of times on the, you know, let's say what is a standard, obviously commercial financing uh, term would be probably 75% loan to value. So a 25% down payment, um, a standard 25 year amortization. What happens when you go to those more preferential terms in terms of going to 80 or 85%? Are there fees involved with that, changing the loan to value? And are there fees involved when you go from 25 to 30 and 35 to 40 on the amortization side? Yeah. So like, well, I like uh, residential, you know, CMHC premiums. There is a standard premium for CMHC financing. So for a residential, it's usually like 4%. For commercial, it ranges, you know, you're probably looking, if you're looking for 85% financing, I believe it's about four and a half percent. And remember, that's four and a half percent of the value of the property and it's tagged onto the loan amount amortized out and then paid out. So it's not something you have to pay up front, but it is in addition to your loan. And if you're talking about a few million bucks, you know, four and a half percent, it's not a little bit of cash. So, um, you know, there is a premium when it comes to increasing the amortization as well. So, you know, it is incremental and it, it does add up. So it's, it's like a base and then you want 40 years as a premium. And then if you want like, you know, uh, in addition to like, if you have like some special preferential treatment, you know, another premium, like it does add up depending on obviously how you're going to be structuring your loan. Um, so it is important to keep in mind. And we always talk to our clients about this is weighing your options and understanding the difference between conventional lending and CMHC financing. What we, what we try to tell our clients is, you know, taking a look at what maybe a two and a half or 2.75% conventional loan with, uh, with a credit union is going to be versus what a CMHC uh, 40 year AM is going to look like. And, you know, factoring in that four and a half percent premium, how long is that going to take for you to pay off from the cash flow of your asset? You're probably looking at three or four years of cash flow to break even to, to even start, you know, making back any of the premium that you paid on that asset. So, you know, what we find is a lot of people who are, you know, have larger portfolios who are, are have already repositioned, who already have top market rents, but that might be a time to start looking at CMHC if you haven't already, because if, it, if there's no upside and you've already done everything you can to reposition the property, squeeze as much out of it, amortize it out and you're good to go. Whereas, you know, if you have a strategy where you're trying to do a big burr and you're trying to, you know, pull cash out, you know, there are restrictions when it comes to CMHC and what you can do with that cash equity if you wanted to refinance. So having the upfront conversation with our clients about what your long-term strategy is, what you want to do with the cash, um, you know, where your building's currently at, where do you plan on the, where do you plan on being in three to five years from now? You know, some of these terms, depending on what your debt servicing is with CMHC are over 10 years. So you got to sit there and you got to plan out what your 10 year plan is for this building. And you know, if you're going to break that term with an interest rate differential, you know, it's going to cost you a decent chunk of change, not including the premium we already paid on the CMHC financing. So you know, it is a very tactical product. Um, it has its place in the market, you know, phenomenal product, phenomenal rate, but um, there are definitely advantages and disadvantages that people who are looking at this product should consider. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that we should talk about too is, you know, these, obviously one of the big attractions to the CMHC are these lower rates. You know, they do have sub 2% rates available. So if you're getting a large commercial building, you know, if you can get that sub 2% rate, that's a, that's a huge factor, especially if you can get the full shebang, right? You can get something sub two in a 40 year, you're going to, you know, in most cases, tremendously increase your cash flow. Um, now, if it's not this pristine building and you aren't able to get the creme de la creme of, of you know, the CMHC financing and you're somewhere in the middle where maybe you're only getting a 30 year amortization instead of a 25 year um, at 80 percent, you know, what does that look like in terms of your monthly cash flow if you're also including a three to three and a half percent premium on top of that? If your rate isn't at, 
you know, a sub 2% and it's around 2.3, 2.5%. And a conventional mortgage is around 2.7 to 3%. You know, are you actually gaining any cash flow or does that increase in premium because your new mortgage amount and, and your mortgage payments are going to be based off that premium? Um, you know, are you, are you still cash flowing and does it make sense? So one of the things that we have is a comparison of uh, a CMHC product versus just a conventional and just making sure, you know, Hey, if you're, if you're this close to conventional financing and you're adding this three and a half percent premium on top, you know, are, are you still cash flowing? Does it still work out? Or is it maybe better to just forgo the CMHC and go with a standard conventional financing option for now, get your rents up as high as you can make sure that building's maxed out and then maybe take a look at a, a, a refinance down the road. Um, but it, it, there are some circumstances where it doesn't quite make sense to go with CMHC. I've had a couple of five to seven unit buildings where clients have been looking at it. And by the time that, you know, the rate were expecting a sub 2% rate, they came back at like 2.55. I'm like, well, you're going to get a 2.55% anyways. You're only getting a 25 year amortization on this. Um, you know, it, it doesn't even make sense for you to take this because you're, you're actually losing cash flow on this month over month. So there are some circumstances where CMHC loan doesn't actually make sense on the conventional side. Will mortgages with CMHC allow for various terms like any other um, lender will? Like, can you go variable rate? Uh, can you do a five-year term, 10-year term? Um, or is it pretty fixed in, in what's offered with a CMHC insured product? Yeah, so, um, so they offer uh, either above a 10-year or below a 10-year. And if you want above a 10-year, it's a certain debt service coverage ratio. If you want to, if it's below a certain debt, debt service coverage ratio, um, it's below 10 years. Um, they do have variable and fixed products. Um, so the products are, or the, the terms, I guess, are going to be issued by the lender itself, whereas CMHC will just uh, kind of like approve the, the qualification of the, of the property. So like First National, for example, they have both um, variable and fixed terms. So the majority of the national lenders that you'd work with would offer you, you know, the uh, the same commercial terms as you would expect from a commercial loan. What is your best piece of advice for people when they're looking at whether they should or should not go with a CMHC insured loan? And what, what's, what's, your, what's your suggestion when people are coming to you for advice on which direction to proceed with? Dial in your numbers, like make sure you truly understand your income and expense, um, you know, your debt servicing ratios on your property where your fair market rents are and, you know, where you're at in regards to being able to maxing out those rents, um, you know, your cap rate, figure out all your numbers, dial it in, work with a broker who, who has done it before, or at least who has a good relationship with a bank who can advise you on how to do it properly there. You do have the ability to be able to preemptively have a conversation with these lenders before you submit it. So, you know, having those conversations, understanding your numbers, it's going to put you in the best possible situation to have a successful application. Yeah. And just have like that preemptive conversation is really the most key part. Just understanding the timeline. Um, CMHC financing does require all reports and everything to be completed beforehand. So it isn't a submit in and then get the appraisal. It's get the appraisal beforehand, get the building condition reports beforehand. If you need a phase two, make sure that's, you know, make sure that's done. It's so when you take a look at a standard commercial appraisal right now, it's taking close to a month to get done and it's going to take you four months to get the actual approval back. You're looking at almost a six month process in some of these situations. Mm -hmm. So when's the closing date? Can you extend six months? Um, a, a lot of the people that we're working with who are newer to the commercial and, and that multi-unit, I'll still get them like, Hey, like is two weeks enough for financing? No, I mean, I, I need probably like a month and a half for financing at least because you're not going to get the, I can't even get the appraisal booked in two weeks at this point. So, you know, just understanding and, and it requires understanding on the sellers uh, from the seller's point as well too, obviously there has to be some give and take, you know, if a seller is really stubborn and, and they're not allowing for extended financing, I mean, I'm, I'm like never going to tell you when to go in firm, but I mean, you know, that seller is just, maybe that's not the deal for you. Right. So just understanding how long the process takes, you're probably, you're, you're looking around five months with everything. What do you consider? You got to get the appraisals done beforehand. So, um, and then like Josh said, we do have the ability to get that bridge financing in. Um, but that bridge financing, you know, as much as they try to make sure you can qualify, it's like I said, it's not always guaranteed that CMHC's numbers come in. So, um, for some of these lenders that do allow you to use a private to help bridge to 85%, if for some reason that CMHC value didn't come in, you know, and you're 5% under, you could be on the hook for that 
five percent extra just to pay it down to get it in within the ratio so um i understand the product yeah, yeah. <laughs> just speak to a broker first and make sure you have a good understanding <laughs> yeah final piece of advice just speak to a broker that's the best yeah. way to go about it <laughs> absolutely uh guys thanks so much for taking some time to walk us through that i know it's going to be hugely valuable because there is a lot of uh misconception i think around this idea of cmhc financing financing and especially when it comes to the multifamily space so i really appreciate you you diving into some details here i'm going to leave your information below in case people want to reach out to you directly and get in contact i know you guys work across canada but predominantly are in the in the Guelph, Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo area. That's where you're located. Um, thank you guys so much again for being here today and taking some time. If you guys enjoyed the session with Aaron and Josh, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com or our new website, readydevelopments.ca, ready spelled R-E-D-I. With that, I'll say, guys, thanks so much again for being here, taking some time out of your busy day to join us. Appreciate uh, your time today, and I wish you all the success in your upcoming year and we look forward to connecting with you at some point in the near future. Thanks so much. Thanks for